Hi, everyone. I'm James Garbutt. And I'm Denny Dumas. And this is the Garbutt Duma Real Estate Podcast. Social media is ever changing. The algorithms keep changing. Uh, it has gotten more and more competitive in the last couple of years in our industry for sure. Uh, we, I like to think that we were an early ish adopter of using it aggressively to market listings, but it's definitely changed in the last couple of years with more and more. It's almost a uh, barrier. It's almost a step to entry. What's the, what's the phrase I'm looking for there, Carl? Uh, to to be in the industry to market homes, it's almost one of those assumptions that you should be using social media to market listings to market yourself. Uh, James, why don't you share with us your thoughts on how to market listings and how that's kind of changed in the last couple of years? Well, um, let's go. Let's go into my relationship with social mm, media. All right. <laughs> First, before we get into the marketing, buckle homes. up. Yeah, buckle up. It's been a long one. Uh, I, yeah, I guess I'm a bit of a dinosaur at it. But when I first got in the business in, in 2008, that was the era when on Facebook, if you messaged people, they would look at it. I mean, everyone was looking at it. If you got a message, oh, wow, someone's getting a message. So I would send out when the market was tanking in the fall of 2008, there was a big crash. And I would send out messages looking for buyers, trying to present opportunities to people. And people would actually respond. Um, and and I, I remember one specific milestone, which was uh, that gave me a lot of momentum in 2009, which was kind of my breakout year. And um, Ani Group had this big liquidation sale because the market was awful. They put all their condos on discount. And I just put it out there. And, I, uh, and between the Port Moody and uh, Victoria Hill developments, uh, I think I connected on 11 deals. And that was largely because of Facebook and just putting it out there. Now, today's world, a lot, lot different. It's, it's harder to stand out. So, you know, I, I've gone from, uh, you know, I guess the content that I put out on Facebook being uh, getting a great return and a lot of awareness to it just being a cloudy space with a lot of players. And, uh, you know, it's, you know, even our ads, you know, before we could do still photo ads, one picture of a house, boost it, get 10,000 views or more and have a lot of people talking about it. Um, I don't know if you recall those, the 2016, 2017 days where we would promote our listings on social media before they'd get listed and just build up like 12 interested buyers with a still photo. Uh, it could be just a townhouse house. Doesn't matter. It was getting a lot of attention. And then by 2018, those ads wouldn't even, they'd get plucked from Facebook because they were no longer effective. So anyway, a lot to cover here because there's so much going on. But, um, you know, I guess I still love social media for some things, but it is exhausting. <laughs> it is exhausting. So, you know, I, I, I like to think that it's important to promote listings and, um, you know, on Instagram and Facebook, there are different audiences and people do still pay attention to it. It's important to, you know, share your listings and your stories and permanent posts on business platforms or even personal if you if you have the energy to do it both, uh, Instagram and Facebook, because it shows effort. And, um, and what you're trying to do there is you're trying to catch buyers that aren't actively looking on the MLS or they might know someone. And we have sold properties from Instagram. We have sold properties from Facebook. It's, it's not frequent. Most of the serious buyers are on the MLS. But, you know, quite frankly, if you have a listing that's been on the market for 30 days and it hasn't sold and you did zero social media promotion or ads or, or any of the extras, then you're going to start questioning yourself, is there more that I could have done? So for me, a lot of it is just trying to have closure that we, we gave it a shot. We, we put it in front of our audience and everyone that pays attention to us and even promoted it to a demographic that we feel where the buyer's coming from. And if it's still on the market 30 days later, at least we have peace of mind knowing that we, uh, we put some extra energy into a, uh, these other mediums. Yeah. Even just from an agent perspective, uh, it looks good to future potential clients that one, you're active. If you're promoting new listings, you're showing that you're actually working, you're showing that you're actually selling properties. Uh, but it shows them too that you are putting in that extra effort. hundred percent. Yeah. 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 Like from a realtor perspective, consider it like your resume. The best part about social media is you, when you build your audience, that audience sticks with you. So I, I'd much rather be investing time and energy into a social media audience than bus benches. 
you know, or, or, or printed flyers. You know, it's, it's one of those uh, unique mediums where you can build an audience that can give you an ongoing return. There's some, uh, there's some realtors out there that are absolutely crushing it in this space. Um, same reason why I like SEO, Google rank and, and Google reviews and all these other mediums where you can put energy into something that lasts, that costs you basically nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any specific example stories of like a huge win off of social media? And I guess it's important to put into context, mm. like James kind of mentioned that 2016, 17, uh, a lot of even our listing presentations were just around explaining how much more exposure we get through social media than most of our competition. We would post a few nice photos of properties and they'd get 15 to 25,000 views even before we were on MLS. And so that kind of stuff doesn't happen anymore, really, unless you either spend a ton of money on the ads or you have a one-off, really unique, eye-catching property that you do a crazy cool drone video for and, mm. and just put a bunch of money behind it. But um, what was the yeah, original yeah, question I did, there? Any wins. I oh, mean, yeah. yeah. So just, I, I, I mean, there's been so many, but a, a couple came to mind when you said that. I remember when I did my first, well, like when I was in the early days of video blogging mm -hmm. and uh, they're pretty awful for today's standards. So don't look them up. <laughs> but I, I remember, and this is at a time in my career where every listing uh, what meant so much because, you know, I wasn't established. Um, but there was a house in New West that when I showed up at the front door, they, um, the homeowners basically said, you're hired, you know, you know, like there was no interview. They knew who I was because of the videos I put out there. Um, and you know, I, I just, the, the meeting was simply about to get to know them and talk about evaluation and strategy of their home, but they were upfront right from the start that saying, we're hiring you. We just want to know what you think and what your strategy is. And, and they said, we're hiring you because we love your videos. So I remember from, from a realtor perspective, getting that feedback early was great. You know, that, that keeps, you know, I need to hear that to keep getting motivated to keep doing them. Um, in a different world of marketing properties, 2016, our breakout year where we just went heavy at it early in the year. Um, I mean, there, there's probably a dozen properties or give or take that we would do those ads and, and boost them and have half a dozen to a dozen ready to go buyers before we've listed the property, then list the property, then tell people when they can see the property and just orchestrate, um, you know, a busy open house that leads into multiple offers. And knowing that when we would see some of the offers come from some of the audience in social media, that was like a little bit rewarding there. And we also had our little crazy video two years ago that I would say was a bit of a win where we, we put some money into a little more of a funny, more professional video. And, and the fact that uh, it ended up getting over 200,000 hits was, that was a, that's a win too. So, you know, I think there's multiple angles to use it. There's a time for promoting properties. There's a time for promoting yourself. There's a time for get, letting people get to know you. But, you know, the, the one nice thing about, you know, video, and I guess YouTube's a little more permanent medium because if you do videos on Instagram, they'll just follow down the feed. But um, if you're doing videos about yourself or you're trying to get people to know you, um, YouTube. You know, I, I think we've gotten a lot of listings because of the video content we did for listings that we sold prior to those listing appointments. For sure. Yeah. I think that is super key to even just touch on again is it's very rewarding for us now to see, well, Jamie's been doing it for 10 plus years in terms of video blogging and using social media, me just for the last few really, but it's really cool to walk into listing appointments now and it happens more and more every single year. And when I started in my career, it was, we're walking, we walk in, sellers say, just so you know, we're interviewing three or four people, blah, 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 which was assumed at that point. But now it often, when we're walking into listing appointments, people are saying, we follow you on social media. We know exactly what you do. We're hiring you. We just want you to tell us what we're supposed to list at. You know, so we're gaining yeah. trust without even actually meeting people. It's just because of the reputation, the resume that we're building online through social media platforms. And just to be clear, like social is just one of the many things we do, but to the people that deem it, you know, that for some clients, it's important. Marketing is important. You know, they, it's important to them that their place is presented well and marketed well. And the effort that we put into our marketing and social media just gives people peace of mind that they know it's going to be done well. There are some people that are still off these platforms. Some people still taking 
pictures from their camera phones. <laughs> Some people that are still not putting the energy and effort they should into these, uh, into these videos and photos. And yes, there are properties that do not justify professional photography or professional videos, but there are a lot that do. And when you see a unique property, you know, whether it's, you know, a waterfront property or a cool loft or a heritage home, that's an opportunity to do a very cool video, get some great shots of it and try to have some sort of intro that lures people in. You know, that's, that's the challenge nowadays is getting past that five to 15 second mark. Yeah. Yeah. And from an agent perspective, obviously a lot of, maybe there's a little bit of laziness, but a lot of the pushback on spending a thousand dollars or $1,500 to produce drone videos and, and, uh, videos and walking up to properties and speaking about them is just the cost involved. But I prefer to think of it as a long-term investment in producing good quality videos like that, that you use to market yourself down the road, not only the listing at the time. I think you nailed that. Like if you're to spend a thousand bucks marketing a listing, that may arguably be more effective than spending a thousand bucks marketing your business. Yeah. You know, because people are seeing the effort you're putting in yeah. and, and we've seen that time and time again. Um, how social media evolves, it's going to be a challenge. Cause I mean, I will say, you know, yet, well, yes, our organic reach is always there. Um, algorithms do change, but organic reach, I would say, you know, when I'm posting on my so personal account or I mean, our business account, I, it's, it's all over the place, but they see what we post. It's the ads that have changed so much. Yeah. The ad space has gotten so competitive, you know, before, like I said, you could post a still picture, you know, we get a, you know, a ton of engagement. And it could just be one photo of the exterior. Nowadays, photos usually get kicked off the ad because they're not uh, engaging enough. And Facebook says you fail as an ad. So yeah, it's <laughs> got to be a 15 second video or some sort of short, or it could be a longer video, but it needs to be a video that's engaging. And even when it is engaging, even when it is a successful ad that gets reach, we're still not seeing the engagement we used to. You know, we're still not, uh, I guess people are just getting too many ads on social media. But that being said, I'm saying this from a perspective of a slightly cooled market. And I, maybe if uh, 2020, 2021, 2022 come around and the market gets hot again, there might be a time, a couple months of the year in the earlier days where ads do gain some traction because people are frustrated because they can't find anything. Yeah. So I, what I kind of just touching quickly on the ads again, is what I kind of like is that it's forcing people to be more creative, first of all, with content, but second of all, with. Uh, picking a demographic with oh, the ads, yeah. right? Yeah. So you used to be able to just be like, yeah. Greater Vancouver ad within 15 or miles on Facebook, 15 miles post. But now you've you've got to be a little bit more selective in terms of the types of people that you want the ad to hit to. Yeah, we, I mean, and don't think by narrowing the criteria, like if we feel that a buyer is coming from, say, you know, say it's a property in New West and we feel that the buyer is likely to come from Burnaby, Vancouver or Tri-Cities, um, don't feel that you're narrowing your opportunities by eliminating the Fraser Valley and the North Shore. It's just that it's it's more important to double down on where the likelihood of the buyer is coming from so that more people in that area see it as opposed to dilute it to areas like Richmond where there's less movement from Richmond to New Westminster or Langley to New Westminster. I mean, yes, there are people moving from outside in, but if we're playing the odds, I mean, we're at these open houses, we're asking people, where are you from? Where are you coming from? And um, a lot of detached homes in New West, buyers are coming from Vancouver. So we want to double down on that audience. And if we're selling something in Vancouver, a lot of those buyers are in Vancouver upgrading within Vancouver. So we're not going to want to spend too, many, too much dollars on those ones going out to the Fraser Valley. So ads, keep in mind, ads were very effective in my opinion. Yeah. They're less effective today, but they still are worth doing. And if you're going to do them, dial in that demographic so you're not diluting it across cities that are low likelihood to you know, to have people that are interested. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I will say, you're going to piss people off when you have a teardown that's $2 million in Vancouver and you promote it uh, <laughs> social media because we've had a few of those too. And oh my, they hate us. We're like, it doesn't matter if we're just representing the property. Yeah. They hate the house. They hate the housing market. They hate you for promoting it. You are just absorbing all this hate. And uh, I get it. It's a frustrating time to be in a city where a teardown could be $2 million. Um, but just recognize if you promote that, you better on you better be on top of those messages because you're going to want to delete them as you go. And we do try to delete them as they go because we can't have a negative message floating on a property we're trying to sell. And um, but anyway, that's what 
We're, I went on a rant there. No, no, no. <laughs> that's a good rant. that's a good thing to bring up. Yeah, because it was it was weekly for us in 2016. Delete, delete. Yeah. <laughs> Being called criminals. Oh, but like we don't determine how much someone's going to pay for it. We just market it. Our job is to market the property. Yeah. We're trying to get the best outcome. We're trying to you know, organize the chaos of a chaotic market. We're not responsible for that market. Okay, let's shift over to personal. Yeah. Uh, how has your personal Instagram usage shifted in the last few years? And what is, what's your strategy? What's your mindset behind posting personal photos, hikes, photos, family yeah, photos? good question. Well, I, I mean... Or what do you I, want people I keep, to take keep, away from it? spitting out kids. So yeah. <laughs> no, that's not the right way to say it. I keep having beautiful children. Uh, so they, they take... So yeah, my whole time designation with social media has changed. For me, the, the challenge has been engagement and knowing that sometimes I personally take on too much. And, and we've also had some very, very busy years in the market where it's been absolute chaos and, and tough to keep up with. So, you know, a lot of, I guess, don't follow my strategy. It's just changed because of exhaustion. Um, I don't pers- post as many real estate stories and, and, uh, and, and, and listings on my Instagram feed uh, that I did before because, well, one, I personally look at my personal feed as something I want to reflect back on later in life with my kids, something that I want to share the exciting and moments that I want to remember. Um, so for me, the personal feed, part of the reason for setting up the business account is w- so that I could keep my personal feed more personal. That being said, I, uh, I intend to, in 2020, I intend to promote more real estate in, in the stories. It's just the permanent posts that will be the unique properties and the special ones. Um, I think the stories are great. Um, I think I'm ready for that engagement again. I just need to dial it in. But yeah, the the message are coming in. All, the messages are coming in all the time, right? So it's um, and we have so many different stories to tell, so many different listings and sales. So I guess I'm probably a little more on the personal side and non business side on my personal Instagram account um, than I than I should be. So I, I do intend to step it up a bit, Denny. And I know you're doing a great job of sharing the world with what you do, but what are your thoughts on it? I mean, well, thank you. That's a big compliment yeah. from you, yeah. Jamie. I remember. Uh, you're welcome, the, Denny. I remember that. <laughs> remember that day very clearly where I sent you a message. I can't remember the exact date. It was like I'm going to make this up. It was March. May 18th, 2018. No, I don't know what it was. <laughs> it. it was either March or May. I think it started with an M. <laughs> anyway, I sent a James a uh, photo of his. Instagram profile and my Instagram profile. And I was like, this day will go down in history. And he's like, what are you talking about? What happened? He like thought something was really bad. I was like, I have more followers than you. <laughs> <laughs> he has a bigger audience. Because yeah. when I started, yeah, to, I don't even know if I used in. Instagram when I started. You no, know, you kind estate. of adopt, you, your whole life changed when you got into real estate. And just so That's we know, correct. Denny, well, I don't know. He was, he was always interested. I, I helped Denny buy his first condo. I was yep. his realtor and he was always interested in, in, in real estate at that time. And I was interested that he was in the bar business. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you know, I thought he had it. We always thought grass is always greener. <laughs> uh, but you know, a few years later, um, uh, he was looking for a change and I was looking for help because I was getting involved with steel and oak at that time, I think. Yep, and, exactly. uh, uh, I don't know if I lured you and if you were going to get in anyway, but I definitely thought I tried to lure you into the business and boy, you've changed so much since that time. You went from a non-social media introverted bar guy <laughs> to this outgoing social here I am world, uh, real, real estate mogul. <laughs> Did you ever see me hosting three podcasts? No, 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 I couldn't, not even close. No, you were pretty shy back then. But anyway, I interrupted you. That's okay. Mean to. Uh, so yeah, social media has changed a lot for me in the last couple of years. Personal wise, I like using this little cliche tagline of real estate is what I do, not who I am. So with social media, I try to show the who I am side rather than the real estate side. And for me, that is showing all the stuff that I love. So being go, going for hikes, being outdoorsy, uh, golf, uh, craft beer, uh, now podcast world. So, and I like, I'm getting more into, this is probably recently in the last six months of taking more time to, uh, provide good or just explain things, explain mindsets and philosophies with the written content of a post as well as the actual post. 
So if you have been reading my post, but more oh, just like yeah. sharing my philosophies yeah. on like positive outlook and uh, use negatives in a positive way and just things like that. So sharing my little weird things that go on in my head as I go through a situation with people that maybe they can take some value from. And I, I love the long captions. I love those long messages because, you know, I, in the rare times that I do it, you, you do get more engagement, you do get more love. Um, and you get to, you know, on Instagram particularly, it's pretty like, you know, you're not getting people's attention span on that platform for very yeah. long. But so sometimes you write something out thoughtfully they get a little better idea of what's going on in your head. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you just post a photo and make it a one-liner, yeah. it, it doesn't mean as much. Mm -hmm. and, and that's part, you know, just kind of, this is, I don't think podcast is necessarily considered social media, but a lot of the gaps that Facebook and Instagram don't fill are why we're starting this podcast. Why we're doing this is because we can, th the messages, people will get to know us better. We'll get to explain things in more detail. You know, they, you can't really misinterpret a podcast conversation the same way you can misinterpret a, an Instagram post. Yeah. So uh, I'm excited for this because I don't, there's so much that we can even cover. But I, I mean, I, sorry. The one I other, yeah, the yeah. one other thing I want to say about like personal social media is uh, be careful, be thoughtful of how much real estate you're putting on your personal uh on your personal feeds, a lot of people just get bored and sick of real estate, especially in the last couple of years in Greater Vancouver. So po if you're only posting, just listed, just sold, just listed, just sold, people are going to get sick of it. So that's why I've kind of taken the approach of uh, using social media as a resume, as a explanation of who I am outside of real estate. And like you mentioned, stories are a, are a fantastic tool for uh, keeping involved or at least showing your following that yes, you're working on a day-to-day -day basis and marketing your listings. But for me, I think it was important to kind of separate the real estate world with the Garba Duma Instagram and, and Facebook versus the Denny Duma world and just keeping them separate to keep real estate a part of my life, but not the dominant factor of my life. Yeah. I, you want to, you want people to, from my understanding, you just want people to know a little more about what you're about. Exactly. Yeah. Let's talk about what sellers should expect. Like, I mean, let's, I mean, we're talking, you know, a lot of this, we're going back and forth from like realtors, you know, and, and one thing we haven't mentioned realtors, like do not everyone's wired for social media. Totally. You know, so if you're, if you're not a social media person, don't try to be someone you're not. Uh, you might be a rock star prospector, you know, door knocker, stick to what you're good at. You might network well in a golf club or a yacht club <laughs> or something like that, or school events, you know, uh, double down on your strength. Um, but I will say it, it, it has done so much for a business choosing a few mediums where you can build a free audience that gives you a return. Yeah. And so whether it's Google social, whatever that means to you, um, uh, you know, I don't, don't think ongoing bus bench bills are going to save the, uh, <laughs> it's going to be a headache one day. That adds no value long-term, but you know, my thoughts from when, if, you know, any regular non-realtors are listening to this and, and they're thinking, you know, uh, the expectation for their realtor and when it comes to marketing their property and social media, it's a low likelihood that those social posts, even if done very effectively will amount to a sale or will lure in a buyer. But to me, it's just more of showing effort. And there is a time where it can, it can work. If I were to guess, let's call it one out of 50 <laughs> oh, yeah. right now, you know, like it's, it's a long shot, but it shows effort. And, um, and sometimes that one out of 50, uh, connects, um, sometimes it dips to one to 20. Sometimes it's just, you're throwing, you're, you're dreaming, you know? So, um, it, it's, MLS is where most people look. Social media shows effort in it and it gets people talking and the more unique the property or the more uh, that property is within reach of your audience, you know, from my, from my experiences having kids and being in that sort of mid thirties family man life in Facebook versus young millennials and in Instagram, I will say I, when I do a post Facebook and Instagram, like if I have a post with my kids and this is going on a little side tangent here, Facebook gets a lot more engagement with kids because it's catering to a little bit of an older crowd or a little more family-oriented crowd 
uh, I'm like, I'm on the line of like that Instagram sort of my age and younger is Instagram, my age and older is not. But uh, fa fa Facebook uh, gets a little more engagement with certain posts. Instagram gets a little more engagement with others. But they are two different worlds. They are two different audiences. And um, if, you know, if I have a house, sometimes I'll get more like a, more, a higher price point. Yeah, Facebook might be more effective for it. But if I have a lower price point condo, Instagram. So the audience changes with it. Um, I have a thought, like if you were like talking from the agent perspective, if you were to enter a new market or you're a new agent getting into this world of real estate, what would be your social media suggestion or focus or recommendations? Ooh, um, starting from scratch. So whether you're, whether it's Denny picks up, uh, his Vancouver real estate business moves to Yukon and decides to be the, no, not the Yukon. That's a better market. Calgary. Okay. You're either reload. You're right now relocating to Calgary. You're going to start out. What's your social media strategy or you're a new agent getting in the business. What do you suggest? It's kind of the same scenario in a way. Uh, yeah, I think you have to understand that it's a long-term strategy using social media, social media, posting one thing about a new listing or something about your personality is not going to make you an overnight success. It's a long-term strategy. And for me now, six years in the business, I'm just really starting to see the effort of that last five years um, actually producing leads in the last year or so. So understanding that's a long, it's a long-term strategy, but um, I don't know, I guess that would be. Where would you, one. well, here, let me, let, maybe this is kind of where I was going with this is, if I were to pick up my business and relocate to a different city mm -hmm. and start from scratch or getting in the business from scratch, I mean, I would put energy and effort into Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. I would start with, uh, you know, my own WordPress website that I own. That's not a templated from another company where I don't mm -hmm. own the content. Um, so I, I don't want to be at the mercy of any other organization. So I, I would, uh, on Instagram, I would, one, if I'm opening a new account or my account, or if I'm, I'm, I'm just on the Instagram world for the first time, I'd make sure I have a number of posts that uh, are quality content that get people to know me. And, you know, say I was moving to Vernon, North Okanagan, and I am a nobody there. Yeah. Um, well, one, I'd make sure that I have a profile that looks engaging and interesting. And then I would just be going to all the different locations around town that people check in and liking photos. So when I'm bored on the, you know, at night and have, it's too late to prospect or whatever it is, I would just be liking, liking, liking other people trying to build an audience. Same thing with Facebook, try to share a content there and, and getting involved with different communities in that area to just get my name out there. So, you know, there's, there's different events, communities, groups. Um, and then in Instagram, you got the locations that people can tag into. And I guess hashtags may or may not be a thing, but, um, essentially just trying to build audience and get attention, but you're going to get more attention if you have an interesting profile with inter 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 interesting content in it. And then on the YouTube side, I would look at that as more permanent content that I wouldn't want to expire in the next year, but preferably still be relevant three to five years out if I'm going to do it. Yeah. So, you know, if you're doing market updates, just recognize that those will fade, you know, a, a, a May 2016 spring market update, it's no longer relevant today. But if you're talking about, I don't know, um, certain neighborhoods or, or zoning density, planning, way a city's evolving, um, that may still be relevant. If you're talking about new developments, people that, even though that new development may complete, people will still live there for years and your content might show up quite high if people are searching for that development or complex. So, you know, I, I would personally be putting more energy into more permanent content on YouTube. I'd be trying to build my social media following. I'd be doing a lot of energy in those platforms. I would be building my Google presence and trying to get reviews with anyone that I can and um, that would be the foundation of my business in a new market. And that's because I understand that world. That's kind of what I would consider my strength. If I had the energy to do it all over again, I still would. Or sorry, if I had to do it all over again, I still would. So anyway. There's a lot of good stuff. I think uh, even just finding online Facebook groups uh, or Instagram locations and commenting, being part of those groups. So if you're moving to Vernon, being part of like the Vernon craft brewery group on Facebook and, or in, yeah. and going in and say, and Hey, I just, had, exactly. Topics, I just yeah. had this beer. This is what I thought. What's your favorite stout in this neighbor, you know, in this area, whatever. Uh, and 
even just starting a little video blog on neighborhoods and the amenities in that neighborhood. So like favorite coffee shop. So I checked out ABC coffee shop today, uh, had a latte. It was fantastic. What's your favorite coffee in Vernon? And just trying to create engagement with people that live in that area through sharing your experience at specific amenities throughout that neighborhood. Absolutely. This is your online resume in a way. And, you know, every year that every, you know, the future and now people Google who they hire. And, and if you're new to the business or new to a market, you're nobody. And any chance you get a listing appointment or I get to land a buyer, um, you want to, if they, if they look you up, you have a higher likelihood of getting that listing. If, if your content uh, reflects you well, if the content's good. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's important. I think it's part of your resume, but I also think it sets the foundation for a building an audience that will give you more and more business every year that goes by if you do it right. There's a lot of good stuff in that's there. That's probably good. Well, that's a good closing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else to add there, Denny? Or? We, I think we need to come up with a closing. Oh, Oh, so do it or I don't want to tell people to do it. <laughs> no, mean, no, no, I, not do it. Uh, uh, what's that? I like that we're just sharing things that worked for us rather than being like, this is what you need to do. Yeah, yeah. I, I, one thing I will say is stick to a platform that y- you're strong. And I mean, if you right. are a LinkedIn person, right. work LinkedIn. Right. If you're not an Instagram person, don't do Instagram. But if you are an Instagram, you might as well do Facebook because they work well together. Yeah. If you're not, you know, don't feel that you have to do YouTube, but... YouTube is great for, you know, longer term content. Mm -hmm. Um, But I've heard it from a few places. It's better to be strong at fewer things than try to spread yourself far and wide across everything. Yeah. That's the same. Like for me, Instagram and Facebook come very easy to me. Uh, I guess my personality just fits well with those platforms. But for me, Twitter is exhausting. Like even just the fact of like searching for stuff. And finding comments that I have something in common with and then co- commenting is just exhausting. And it takes a lot of time and it almost makes me tired. <laughs> it, it, Twitter's, <laughs> I think, its own little subculture. Yeah. I don't know anyone that's, you know, I, I think people that are really good and really into Twitter aren't into the other ones. Sure. Yes, it's, it's, you know, it's its own thing. It's more conversational. Yeah. And yeah, I'm on the same page. I'm not a big Twitter right. Is that what they're called? Twitter right? Twitter? A Twitterer? <laughs> no idea. Uh, all right, let's wrap up. Let's do it. Guys, yeah. we'd love to hear your feedback on uh, your social media ideas or if you got any value from that. Uh, write us a review. Check us out. Hit the subscribe button on the Garbit Duma Real Estate Podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening, guys. <laughs>